All right, guys. Welcome to I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger looking good dating simulator. And yes, <laughs> this is Colonel Sanders from KFC. I don't know if I'm capturing my ma my mouse. I don't think I am. I shouldn't be actually. Now I think about it. I need a. I need to. I need to plan this shit out beforehand. I've had to restart this recording twice. Okay, we don't want to capture cursor this time since it's just a, a simulator. I just click game unless it. Uh, yeah, we're fine. Okay, all right. So let's start a new game. Uh, my name is Papa PJ. Papa. We got ourselves some biscuits and some thing. Anyways, uh, KFC made this game. A couple of days ago actually it released a couple of days ago and I actually can't believe it they did that anyways let's let, let's begin you sleep softly as the morning Sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment the world is peaceful and serene you could stay in the moment forever why the fuck do I have that as an alarm that's so annoying or you can wake up now, 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 now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock up. Smack that clock up and at him. Jesus Christ, throw the clock out the window and see. All right, let's let's get it. Let's get up in it. Jesus Christ. I I mean, obviously they're gonna have like chicken as a big theme of this because you know it's KFC. Well, that was annoying. <laughs> Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. I mean, we're gonna be late, aren't we? Oh, Papa Colonel Sanders. I don't know if he'd like us to be late. He might punish us. <laughs> we're gonna daydream a bit. It's here, finally. Your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare. So many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. Grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Oh god, mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Are you kidding me? Jax, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you run to arrive on time. Uh oh. Standing at the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Uh, here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Mariam. 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 Oh, she's kawaii. Kawaii! She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Papa PJ! <laughs> Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? I don't want that for her voice. Good morning, Papa PJ. Good, 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 good. Good morning, Papa PJ! Actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I feel... <laughs> oh god, no, don't cry! <laughs> <laughs> the way I was talking, your voice came out to my actual voice, and I said, Quiet instead of crying. Classic Miriam. Mir Miriam. Raised by Master Chief parents, she always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, you rescued me from that quicksand box. The fuck? <laughs> it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. But with the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that 
She chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh god. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her more relief? You know what, Maryam? You got this shit. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had her tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Oh no. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet. She told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon, in no time. We'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. You have some killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? <clears throat> you can definitely believe it. Uh, I can't believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands onto the floor to the ground. Hey! It's Alicia. Aishilia. The fuck am I supposed to say that? Aishilia. Bitch. It's a bitch. Your arch rival. <laughs> She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. She's really fucking hot though. Look at them titties. Hello, bitch. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. She has chicken. She actually has chicken on her. Chin. Well, no, shins. No, shins are down here. She has chicken on her thighs. She has chicken thighs. That's very clever. I like that. You leave P Papa PJ's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, <laughs> oh, you can't stand bitch. Even her name is annoying. Wait, no, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. Fuck, I wanted to read that. Hold up, wait. Wait, wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold up, I got this. Wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Uh, uh, you can't stand, bitch. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. Oh! She wants to make her name seem more fancy. I get it now. I get it now. But she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Okay, Ashley. Her name isn't bitch. Her name's Ashley. I can't read, by the way. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. What? We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair no lie they're rocking glutes him him van van you rag rag ring ring that's a sexy jaw <laughs> you've never been sure what their arrangement is but as long as you Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but subsequent, sub, subsequently more devious. Okay, I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just send us our diplomas now? Or maybe hire us on as professionals. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. Haha. <laughs> ha. 
with the first day of school about to start, there's just not time for to properly tell these two off. You so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. <clears throat> Psh, see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What? <laughs> Oopsie! I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull- Oh, he broke, okay. Huh, that should do the trick. <laughs> I love you. I, I want a nice playful voice for him, but like I already have kind of like a childish voice for Miriam. <laughs> You're gonna hate me for this. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name's Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. <laughs> Can someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> Hi, Pop. I'm Papa PJ. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Uh, nope. <clears throat> and with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A, scru a scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Now now, quiet down everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles. Head instructor and CEO of USCAL. <laughs> oh. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Wolf. What the? A cute dog is our professor. This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as you swirl, as you swirl, a, as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. It's Colonel Sanders, isn't it? I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then he walks in. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so glad that they did this. <clears throat> You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student in his remarkable goatee. <laughs> Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time's dead still. It's him! It's- It's my favorite student. That's not the right word. Aha! Uh -huh. No, that is the right- that's the right voice. Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sparkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. He must. He must did murmur. A hushed. Hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is swelting. Sweltering. Don't know what that word. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. You're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty. Sweats a lot. Ha 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 ha. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melt into a puddle and evaporate entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. She's furious. You uh, you two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Papa PJ sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. What is wrong with you? What is this game? <laughs> you turn to find Carl Sanders standing right in front of you. 
Colonel Sanders is a beautiful angel that he is. He stands before you, smiling gently. His outstretched arms. I like how how they want to make him look so sick. I mean, he's sexy, not gonna lie. Look at that fucking... Wah! Um, boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Look at that fucking, look at those muscles that they added on him. His face is so small compared to the rest of his body, by the way. <clears throat> what voice did I have for the colonel? Please, use my handkerchief. Oh, that's better. I like that voice. Ooh, you freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Kawaii desne. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortifying. <laughs> This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? I don't know. I don't know what I do. I assume if I assume he wants me to relieve my pits of sweat with his handkerchief. That's really weird. This game has been really weird so far. I mean, my my uh, mer mer merman Merlin. Murian just complimented my beautiful, beautiful sweat pits. What the fuck is this game? I'll take the handkerchief. You st stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. So beautiful, you hesitate to press it to your face. When you, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. <laughs> it has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Professor Dog snips it, set, settle the class down, and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School. Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary lenders past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, though I spat. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when it's all, when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compliment in the Brome cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the ah! Another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good sub. I really miss. Quiet! Hey, the class is bad enough by interrupting my monologue. You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even on the right place? Uh, don't you recognize me? This is my third year at the school. You as my teacher. <laughs> everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Look how mad again. I like how they have them blink. That's a good touch. Let that be a lesson to your students. That tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clark made it here on time. We're like halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sparkles is referring, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. The class burst into laughter. Oh, look at his face. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks into the class as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what you're... Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Hmm, your diet is lacking. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smarter but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat for from your pocket, but what kind? Chicken snack. Beef treat from the ball. Obviously, this game wants me to pick the chicken snack 
but in fact i don't like a chicken snack you know what i bet a hundred percent if i click chicken snack it's going to like be all like five dollar fill up or some shit you know i want to i want to do it i want to do it can i save i can't save why can't i save this is retarded why did i do that why did i do that <laughs> this is the second time i've done something stupid oh hey okay cool let's, let's skip a bit all right i have a rubber ball Rubber ball. Reach behind your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. <laughs> you toss the ball and he bounces to after it, grabbing it in his mouth and swinging it from side to side before dropping it. Throw passes quickly. It's not clear if it <laughs> if that endured you to him or not. <laughs> Settle down, young chefs. Chefs, take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seat, you're left standing in the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Papa PJ, there's still a seat here! Seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Two good options, but which will you choose? You know what? I'm gonna sit- oh, Colonel is sexy as fuck, but I'm gonna sit next to my best friend. Me and Miriam have been way too much for me to pass up a seat next to her. Chicken. Uh, you move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad that you have your- To have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders, he has such a magnificent personality, and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get to catch, I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say, but now that Miriam mentions it. Oh wait, fuck. So you say, now that Miriam mentions it. That Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. <laughs> Think fast. It's time for pop quiz. My voice changes all the time. Get used to it. Yay, a pop a quiz. Yeah, a quick pay, uh, Yeah, fuck. Yeah, a quiz about me. This incredibly important, surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp. Hey, your question, sorry, man. I can't even have Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharp, and here comes question one. Train A is traveling to point B, and train B is traveling to point A. How important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. Meh, depends. Doesn't matter. It's extremely important. You always wash your hands before cooking. That's right. Forest is tree as chicken is to a feather. Night vision cock a slump. Feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. A metal tenderizer. A comically oversized. Obviously, it's going to be a spark. Because, I mean, it's a spoon and a fork. How more efficient can you get? And also, he was talking about sporks earlier. That's right. And he has a spatula in his mouth. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Caramel meat. A pancake that looks like a... Anything as long as it's prepared for... That's right. As is Sprinkles a good boy? No. Yes. He is a talking... He is a dog that teaches a colonist girl. He is the best boy. Oh, he's the best boy. That's right. Of course he is. He's the best boy. Look at him. Perfect score. Five out of five. Well, be honest. Did you cheat? No, I didn't. 
You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been waiting, watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, Papa PJ. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. Shut the fuck up, phone! You damned, damn device giving away that I have a phone. No, I no need. May I have your attention, students? May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a, that a school dedicated to cooking would be so serious about eating. Delicious fra fragrance wafts through the... Delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your wa your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was just... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But a poor student. But I. Shh. Lunch. 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 She said shush. In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. <laughs> that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see that what food that mis this mysterious student has created. You've you've heard that he's very talented, but the rumor's true. Is this? Oh, Sanders lifts a bucket above his head. His cool content glimmers in the light. <laughs> look how look how detailed they made that chicken as well. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish this aroma envelops you you begin to feel warm and safe Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken what a novel concept Your stomach begins to crumple as if to say stop thinking and start eating actually no lie my tummy is actually crumbling right now for years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken <laughs> <laughs> By my calculations, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What the? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Nah, my dude, nah. I am just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of these ingredients is uh, poisonous. Got him. He looks around nervously. See if anyone else is laughing at this sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's fucking. She wants Colonel Sanders bad. She wants that. She wants that Sanders dick. You see, her body language changes from bitter to evil to sweet and innocent as she does, as she sights closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Well, then, then, the man, man. If you don't want any. I'll take his. Ho, ho, ho. I mean, I guess I'll try it. <laughs> he takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts from contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure acceleration as he acts unimpressed. <laughs> Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. 
You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket. You sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Oh my god, are you fucking serious? <laughs> Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor this moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. We'll do the second one. His favor in your mouth are beautiful. <laughs> the flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, and heavenly. What a guy. <laughs> Along with the flavors, you feel something that can only be desired as love for a man, for a flavor. Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly at you. As you approach, he stops what he is doing and allows you to break it the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Haha, <gasps> how bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. I like her as a cane. It's just you and me, we're, we're uh, here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up that easy and give up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what? You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? I've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> but you can't tell. I use the secret ingredient. It's something my great grandmother taught me. Wow, you never have guessed that. In fact, I'm not even sure where you'd get some if you'd searched. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Something I'd like to come come outside and look at the school building. Think about, think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone, together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to neg him to show you her, to show your own steps. And wow him with a big idea to add to the traditional ingredients to really spice things up. Be modest, be it thoughtful. You know what? You know about that? I was thinking about your secret recipe. Don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste. You decide to show them that you also know a thing or two about bowling lines with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you can improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? I've heard of them. I Tend an entire garden of chili peppers varieties, habanero pepper, pepperino, cayenne, but that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. The recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improvise on my recipe, Papa PJ. Oh fuck. I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. I'm sorry, Colonel! Look at that glare. That certainly didn't go as planned. You better head back inside, but you wait for you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're deliberately chasing after him. You step in you step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven 
and all the tools <sighs> ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally, we get to show off our staff. I think these are supposed to mirror actual like food change. I think this is supposed to be windy. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Wait, you're not going to blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lessons, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair up. Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control herself, you pounce on... Wow. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you. If that if that's what's clear. Wow, I didn't even get to choose. I would have chose Miriam. Look, she's so sad. Want to be my partner? Sure, Papa PJ. I'll prepare a station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students take highly take note. I think that's supposed to be. I don't know who that's supposed to be. I think Ashley is supposed to be McDonald's. No, Ashley's supposed to be Burger King. I think. I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I feel like there's like an underlining like 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 thing to all of these characters. Like I feel. I feel like KFC is also not only just like putting this out as like a thing for like people to, you know, obviously this is a big advertisement, you know, they put this out to appeal to weebs like me, but I also feel like this is a perfect opportunity to poke fun at a lot of the other like fast food chains like McDonald's, fucking Burger King, Wendy's, you know, Popeye, you know, all that other shit. I feel like I feel like this might be McDonald's because it's like a big jolly happy fun you feel like I can feel like a clown-esque coming from him you feel you feel this is Wendy and I feel like the other ones um what's her fight what the fuck I don't know who you are I don't know if you're supposed to personify a restaurant chain but I don't know who the fuck you are you creep me the fuck out clank Anyways, beep beep, uh, um, oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you've, you, you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Marion's partner? Why not Pop? Pop seems nice. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. Oh no! <laughs> I made Clank sad! <laughs> Pop gives a big smile and he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef! <laughs> he holds up a banana and without filling it, boom. Proudly eats the entire thing. <laughs> it's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grotesques. I love your enthusiasm, Pop! She looks at you like, really, this kid? But it's too late to change your choice now. <laughs> Pop is so, like, okay. She said Pop is adorable, all right? Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Using octopus with blow Sanders men, your grandfather's mashed potatoes and gravy. Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy, but you don't you don't even need to cook it. We'll do mashed potatoes and gravy, because obviously Colonel Sanders will be all like, Oh my god! Mashed potatoes? You know what would go great with the mashed potatoes and gravy? A fucking bucket of chicken! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassing you, quick, embarrassing you quickly turn around. Right. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me picking perfect product is my is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Ah, uh, Nani, we're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, Ashley. Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off, my man. <laughs> Did someone cut for me? Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Papa PJ's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That's the deal, remember? Aww. Colonel Sanders returns, on full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his affection, affection to you and your old friends. Oh, hi there, Ashley. Van Van. Are you reworking in a quart quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. I'd. It looked like Papa PJ was struggling, so we offered to give him a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need to, a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Not to be a dude, Van Van! Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' skill to concord creations worthy of admis ad admis ad admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, it might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complementary shadows, we fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. You have drumsticks on your thighs. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't wash out. Ashley is really going at your hand. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel, hunks of hunks in your time of need. Forever Bessies, who always has your back. I turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girlfriend in need, our uh, radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Oh, Jesus. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. <laughs> leaving you in the... Leaving you in the dust and... Vis a vis, my skills as a chef, perhaps, but stepping away from this competition, you swirl in my stake. You swirl in mistake. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Papa Peach is my partner for today's activity. Damn! You look for sparkles in hopes that he might step in, but he is nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed and boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and creamy and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guides you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his arms. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your neatly finished potato dish. Oh my god. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The, res the results look spectacular. Ranny would be proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork to you. Spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it. 
but it doesn't it doesn't immediately let go he doesn't immediately let go the two of you stand holding the same spork and for that small moment all the madness and pressure in the crazy world stops <laughs> your eyes lock this moment is electric time stands still if you love something if you love something set it free Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spookful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling a sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, <laughs> stupid, beautiful face. Fun, fun, do something! <clears throat> Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dipping. Dripping mashed potatoes and gravies and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will be will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold it right there, Papa PJ. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd bet both you'd both be you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. <clears throat> Can I have potatoes face? Van Van rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy. Pathetic. In, in just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my spectacularly braised tender. <clears throat> my throat! Braised tentacle of octopus and my silly, silky saltware sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. This that ends now. It is I who will have first bite. And you all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Von Von and swipes one bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. <clears throat> Too late. It has been eaten. I, um, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. Holy shit. It killed them. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his obvious self. Oopsies! Tastes like poison! The entire class is, has gathered to watch Pop's final moment. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious dangers, has inoculated him against poison of all kinds. I'm sure. I'm not sure the professors here make make enough money. Uh, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaking up. I would really play that a really annoying student and all his nonsense. Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders up the room. At night, the school building has taken on another bite. Okay, so I... Th that's really interesting. This game is really fucking weird. All right, so I think that's where we're going to leave it off. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I I fucked up my voice screaming so much. So um, <clears throat> yeah. Also, I'm really hungry. This game doesn't help. Not at all. Anyways, I hope you comment, re subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.